Ladies and gentlemen, ahoy. I'm Derek Elliott from Dirt.com, and I'll be your captain today on today's boat animation tutorial. I'm going to try to squeeze in as many boat puns as possible, but I really haven't thought of any good ones, so bear with me. Uh, maybe you'll get lucky. So I need to obviously create a boat to animate a boat, or you could download one. There's probably some good boats online. Uh, and I'm going to use this cube to create a boat. I'm going to press Control R to do an edge loop or loop cut, and then I'm going to delete the vertices on this side. Uh, I think there's a faster way to do this, but uh, I haven't really investigated. Adding a mirror modifier so that now when I make changes on this side, it'll happen on the other. Good for symmetrical objects like boats. Great. I'm going to move that in. Let's maybe uh, scale this whole thing out a little bit on the y-axis. Something like that. Um, and I'm switching between one to vertices select, oops, two to edge select, and three to face select, kind of as I edit this object. Spend as much time as you'd like to getting your boat just the way you like it. Alt Z, by the way, to go into this uh, X ray mode. Very cool thing in Blender 2.8, X ray mode. So yeah, I'm just gonna just gonna adjust my boat here, add as much detail as you like. You just uh, you want it to be kind of boat-like. That's really what we're going for. You could do a jet ski. I actually thought about doing a jet ski. Somebody do a jet ski. Share it with me on Instagram. The whole world needs to see your jet ski. That rhymes. Okay, so that's looking cool. A little longer than I like. Let's scale that down a little bit. And I'm going to, I want to round this out, make it look nice and smooth like a boat with a subdivision surface modifier, which will turn into a turd. <laughs> I don't want that. Smooth the whole thing out, so let's just uh, delete this top face. And now we're gonna get a little bit more of a, a hole-like shape. And now we can really see what kind of additional adjustments we're gonna need to do to get this boat looking boaty. Boaty McBoat face. That was a funny thing. Okay, so... Uh, Control R, adding an edge loop, just making a few adjustments there. You know, maybe if we uh, slide these vertices over, get a little bit more of a rounded look on the back. C to circle select, my fave. Uh, yeah, so just adjust this as much as you like. Take a couple years like me, or do it quickly. There, that's going to be a cool edge loop, because now we're going to have a nice little crease on the bottom. Sweet! Let's maybe add another edge loop here. And uh, it's like fatten out this middle part a little bit. And pull these over. Cool. I'm liking it. Do you guys like it? I can't hear you people from the future. I said, do you like it? Just kidding. Okay. Looks pretty boaty to me. Do as much as you want. I'm done. Let's add a solidify modifier to make it solid. This boat is so solid. AF. Okay, give it some thickness. Um, I want it to be about that thick, but I've got a little issue going on over here. So I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to move this vertice over. Press G twice to edge slide it. And yeah, now we've, we've uh, eliminated the issue. We've eliminated the threat. Okay, now I'm going to, for the purposes of style and also to hide some things we're going to do later with the particles, I'm going to add a kind of a, like a top here. And the way I'm going to do that is by pressing Shift D. And that creates this. So let's press F to make it a face. And if we were to move this, it's going to get screwed up. And that's because... In the mirror modifier, we need to turn on clipping, and that will clip our edges and bring them together. Okay, so that looks good. Let's just bring this down a little bit. I just want this to be kind of like a a deck, you know, a deck under the boat, mateys. I'm really lacking on the puns here. I'm so, so sorry. Okay, now I can't tell which verse I've selected. I do have the right one, but I don't have both of them. Let's... uh. Cha cha. Move that in. Okay. Yeah, I just don't want it to like be poking out, which it kind of is in a couple places there. There. 
you could do that any number of ways, but I think just duplicating the top and then pulling the vertices around where it's poking through works pretty good. Yeah. Oh, you could like, what if you like move this down or something? No, that's going to look ridiculous. Okay. I won't do that. Don't try to experiment, Derek. The boat looks fine. Um, okay. There's just one last thing. I promise. I promise. I promise. Just want to make it a little shorter and then maybe make this, uh, this little part a little fatter. Okay. Boat equals done. Um, I feel like there's a little gap here that I don't, I don't like. Okay. And this is the uh, educational part of the tutorial where you realize you have to be done with things eventually. That's the whole reason I did that was to, was to teach a lesson that you can't make your boat perfect. Oh my God, look at that boat. It's perfect. It's uh, it's not perfect. Take your time, make your boat cool. I'm fine with mine how it is. We've probably been doing this tutorial for a hundred thousand years already. Let's move on to the next part where we will be making the water. I'm going to press shift A. I'm going to add cube because water is cube. No, it's not. S Z S shift Z actually S and then shift Z will constrain. So it doesn't scale along the Z axis and that's looking cool. Let's um, where'd my little gizmo go here? Move this down a little bit and then I'm going to smooth this out with a subdivision surface modifier. Ha tricked you. The ocean isn't cubes. So there's two values here. Um, the viewport is what you see and the viewport renders how many you'll actually get when you render. Let's leave them both pretty high for now. Five looks pretty good. And let's just kind of center this bad boy up. Actually, let's maybe leave that in the center and let's move the boat back to match. Okay, cool. Maybe move that down a little bit. And then um, let's make the water a little bit thicker. Something like that looks cool. And then so that it's kind of more flat on the surface. Let's do that. And just to make it even a little more stylish, let's maybe uh, let's maybe scale this in. There. Now we got our little water pod on which we can drive our cute little boat. Okay. Got that there. Now to give the water some ripple effect, I'm going to use a displacement modifier, which is always in a different place. You have to find it. There it is. Just kidding. It's always in the same place and I can never find it. Now that actually is the decimate modifier. Let's add a displacement modifier. There we go. See, look, it's like, it starts with a D. It's got this little triangle thing. Not liking that blender. Watch your icons, bro. Just kidding. Okay. So this is doing some weird stuff. Not what I want. I need to, I need to tell it like how to displace. I'm going to do that with the texture. So I'm going to press new and then I'm going to go click this button. That's going to bring me into the texture tab where I can change this to a Voronoi type texture more annoyed wipe texture, which is going to look oceany after I make a couple adjustments here. First of all, the scale, let's bring it up. Oh yeah. I'm looking pretty oceany already. I think that's cool. Uh, one thing is I'm going to shade this smooth. And the reason we added the subdivision surface modifier was not only to round this out around the outside, but also mm -hmm. to give this uh, more annoy displacement modifier, some uh, geometry to play with. If you don't have any geometry, it just like, it doesn't work. So, you know, if, like if I turn this down, you can see it's less and less detail. So you need a little bit of geometry and the subdivision surface works well for adding that. Now I am getting some funky things happening on the edges here that I don't enjoy. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. So I am going to have this displacement modifier affect only one direction. That's going to be the Z direction. Very nice. This is... Z water. No, that's, that's not a good pun. Okay. Strength, a little too much, a little too strong. Let's tone it down a bit. Something like that looks good. And yeah, pretty much thinking I'm done with that. That looks watery. Now I need to move the texture. I need to make it look like the water's moving. So I'm going to do that by controlling the, uh, texture coordinates. Yeah. Texture coordinates. I'm going to change them to an object. Um, but we need to have an object to control that. So I'm going to add an empty and I'm just going to make it a cube, pull it down a little bit so we can see here. And then now I can pop, pop, click that. And now when I move this around, it will control where that's going. You can see where we're going with this. So now I could either, I can move this 
or if I want my animation to loop seamlessly, I could give it an R X, an X rotation value. And if I rotate it 360 degrees, one full rotation, then it should loop seamlessly. Let's find out. I'm gonna press N to bring up my sidebar there. And what was that, the uh, X rotation? Yes, and it's gonna to need to go negative value. So frame zero, let's insert a keyframe. And then uh, I don't want this to be so long. Let's just do uh, 72 frames. Um, three seconds, 24 frames per second. Sounds pretty good to me. Let's rotate this negative 360 degrees. Holding control to snap there. And yes, there's a little bit of an easing happening on. It is uh, looping though, so I'm gonna select those keyframes and then press T and change the interpolation to linear. And now that will just have a steady rotation. I think that looks nice. It loops, it's good. Let's, uh, let's move on to the next part, which is gonna be adding a little bit of animation to the boat itself. Now, if you saw the video in my intro, you really liked it, thank you very much. It took some time, and because it takes time, we're not gonna make it exactly like that. We're just gonna make it bob up and down a little bit, but the technique is exactly the same to what we're gonna be doing. It's just, uh, you, you do a lot of playing with curves in certain keyframes, things like that. And I'm noticing now our boat isn't smooth. Let's right click and shade it smooth. And so that this top doesn't get smoothed, let's go over here into the context. I was gonna say vertice data. It's apparently this is called context. Oh wait, no, object data. They all say context, okay. Anyways, normals, auto smooth. That works a little bit like an edge split modifier, but um, it's not so costly in terms of adding geometry, which I think the edge split does, like it like doubles vertices on the edge. It splits them, and keeps them where they're, I don't know what it does. Use this, it works good. So this is good. Oh yeah, we were gonna do a little bit of, a little bit of bobbing. Hi, my name's Bob. I just, okay. Pun, pun, puns aren't hint today. So location up and down, that's Z. Let's insert a keyframe there and then on frame 72, let's insert another keyframe there so that we know they start and end in the same place. So let's have it maybe go, let's just have it like halfway down. Well, let's maybe, maybe it starts, it goes up, something like that. And then it goes down something like that that's pretty cool now it's got a little bit of a weird a little weird pop there i think that's big let's go in the graph editor see if we can figure out what's causing that so over here press period now we can see yeah so the reason is so it should be it should kind of have that slow curve at the peak and the trough there but this should be like a constant rate when it goes, it's kind of slowing down right there, but they should kind of lead into each other. So I'm just gonna adjust these handles a little bit. And now, that looks a little bit better. Maybe this should even be a steeper angle. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of trying to match the angle. So like you can imagine this one leading into this one. That looks good. Now let's just give it a little bit of uh, rotation to go with that, which it's gonna be the, uh, oops, it's gonna be the X rotation. So let's say when it is at its peak, when it's at its peak, it's probably zero. So let's see, right here it's going up. So let's have it actually start maybe leaning back a little bit, insert a keyframe, which means we want it to end at the same place. And then, okay, so it's going up. And then maybe in the middle here, it's pointing down. We, oh yeah, that's looking good. I think we're gonna leave it at that. If you want to, you can you know adjust this X location, you know, make it go back and forth, rotate it Y. That stuff looks really cool, but I am telling you, it can take a long time, especially once you start getting multiple directions and values to make it look good. It is worth the investment if you want to make a nice looking animation, but um, we're not going to cover it in the tutorial because it's the same process as what we just did. Uh, it just takes longer. So this tutorial is long enough. Let's move on to the next part, which is going to be doing a little bit of lighting. And I'm going to do that by opening up a shader editor here, hide this toolbar, and then clicking and dragging down to create a new window, which I'll make a 3D viewport. And to hide that, T 
key to hide that. This button to hide the overlays. Zero to go into my camera view. And uh, let's actually go ahead and set up that camera. So again, style choice here. I like orthographic for something like this. And uh, I'm going to change my aspect ratio. Something like a 1500 by 1000 for some reason is the uh, dimension I like lately. That's cool. Um, now to kind of zoom this out in orthographic, we can just adjust the scale there. I think that looks good. Nice and framed in the center there. You know, maybe we make our camera point down just a little bit more. Good. So let's swap this to a rendered view. And uh, it's looking great. Kind of. Maybe not quite. Let's move this point lamp. Actually, first I want to add a uh, plane. Shift A, mesh plane. Just to give ourselves a little bit of a ground. Kind of fill the frame here. Fill the frame with the plane. Does that rhyme? I'm just scaling it till it hits outside those corners. And for this light, um, first thing I'm going to do is kind of move it so I got the shadow where I want it. This is going to be kind of like a backlight. I think that looks good. And then I'm going to adjust the softness of the shadow by increasing the size here. And then I'm going to adjust the power, bring it up to uh, maybe like a. Uh, I'm sliding my mouse all the way across my desk here when I could totally just type in a value. That looks pretty good. Something like that, nice and bright. And then let's have one more light over here. I'm pressing Shift D. Maybe this one's a little lower, not so big, and not nearly as powerful. Let's try like a 500 there. Looking pretty good. So a few materials should now be set up. And I'm noticing my boat is, I don't, so in my animation I did have it pop over the water, which looked cool, but right now I'm not, I'm not digging that. So let's just, uh, I guess we can just do it by moving this up a little bit. There, now it's got a nice uh, draft, I believe is the technical term there. That looks pretty good. Let's, uh, let's set up a few materials. So over here on the boat, uh, you don't have to name your materials, but I'm going to name this one Boat. Uh, because I want to. I'm going to make it a red. Because I want to. Or orange, okay. Make it whatever color you want. And um, you can adjust this roughness, make it really rough, really shiny. I think I like it right there, what it was. 0.4 looks pretty good. And let's set up another material. Let's have that material be the ground here. And again, do whatever you like. I'm just going to pick kind of a, a sandy color there. And I want this to not be so shiny, so I'm going to turn down the specular. And I want the shininess that there is to not be so sharp, so I'm going to turn up the roughness. This is not a material, mater material, material, tutorial, maternal t material, tutorial. But um, there, yeah, some simple materials. But wait, the cool material, the water, let's set that up. Water, name it, cool. I'm not naming anything over here, but whatever. Pick your battles. So I've got the water. Let's make it blue. <laughs> Don't ask me why. It's water. And um, bam! That's the cool part. That's what you were waiting for. All we did is turn the transmission up. Cool. I like it. Now it's a little gummy looking. I'm going to avoid that by turning this roughness down. You could have it be super glassy by turning it down to zero. But I'm a man of, uh, I'm a simple man. I don't like my reflections to be so sharp. Does that make me a simple man? Probably not. Something like a 0.16 is very nice, I must say so myself. Yeah, that looks good. Um, yeah, it looks good. I don't think much more to say about that. You could adjust this color here, you'd be surprised how much it does. The value going up will make it like more clear, down will make it more like black waters, the black pearl. Yeah, so value, I like to keep that pretty high. Saturation, you can bring it down. Going for a little bit of a stylized look in my case, so I'm going to give it a little bit of saturation. And then hue, it obviously would adjust the color of it. If you want to do like a red water, blood. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm going to save. Oh, I haven't saved. <laughs> That's scary. Just kidding, it's not. This is the third time I've done this. You guys should save, though. You don't want to mess it up. 
looking sweet. Oh, yes, there was one more part, the particles. So if you're new to Blender or maybe you never used particles before, this could be a little intimidating, but it's really not that bad. Um, let's, let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to pause my render over here because it's about to get a little bit crazy. Just kidding, it's not that crazy. Don't be scared. So I need to add in a particle system. I need somewhere for the particles to emit from. So I'm just going to pick a frame where my boat's kind of flat right there. That looks good. And then I'm going to add a plane. Mesh. Plane. Cool. And then for this plane, we need it to... This is going to be a little hard to explain at first, but I'm going to move this over. Let's give it a mirror modifier. Basically, we want these planes to be facing the way we want the particles to go. So this is going to be kind of confusing, like I said, but bear with me. Um, let's, uh, I want them to, yeah, like I said, the way that the particles will shoot out. So I want them to kind of shoot out that way. So I'm tilting the planes right there. And then let's uh, maybe extrude this, rotate that. Yeah, maybe like bring this up, over, bring that back a little. Maybe bring these. Darn it, click. Press G twice to move that up. Yeah, that's like a nifty. And then maybe one more plane back here. Let's turn on clipping. Um, I'm gonna shift D, let's just extrude this. And then, cool, something like that. And we'll want it to shoot kind of outwards. So let's rotate that. All right, so if you were able to uh, just kind of sit through that, now you'll see why we did that. Let's go ahead and add a particle system over here in the particle tab. Press this little button, then I'll make a new one. And uh, woohoo, we got particles, but they're um, shooting the wrong way. For one thing, let's uh, so that I can see through this a little better, let's adjust this material. Viewport display. Turn the alpha down so we can see through it. Cool. Okay, so first thing I'm noticing is it's not coming out both sides. And that's because in this particle settings, I need to emission source use modifier stack. There we go. Oh, and then the other thing, I want this to go with the boat. So let's get back right about to where that was. And then let's just uh, parent that to the object. There, now the emission goes with it. Okay, so the particles are falling down, that's good. Gravity's realistic, it's a good thing. We'll leave it, but I want them to shoot outwards, like the uh, like the water's like pushing this out. And the way I'm gonna do that is by adjusting this normal velocity. And so as I drag that up, you will see that it kind of shoots out. So just pick a nice value. You don't want them like flying into the sky. Maybe you do, that looks kind of cool. I'm just gonna go with a nice modest five meters per second. Looks good to me. Um, now we do have a little bit of a problem here. This plane is kind of shooting them down and that's because this normal obviously has to do with the normal. So let's go into edit mode, select that plane and then I flip the normals. And now it should uh, shoot out the right way. But I don't want these shooting out the side. I want them shooting back like the wind is blowing this mist of wake into the air. So I'm going to add a force field. The force is strong with this tutorial. That was bad. Um, so it's a wind, G, Y. Let's just bring it out so we can see it. R, X, something like a 90 so that it's going straight back. And you can see it's having a little bit of effect, but we can obviously bump that up right here at the strength. And yeah, just turn that up so that those particles are now kind of blowing backwards and just adjust this value till you get a look that you like. That's pretty good for me. Maybe I want to bump up the normal power now that I've added that wind. That's cool. Okay, cool. So I don't want them flying that far into the distance though. So the way I'm going to adjust that is by changing the lifetime of them. And I'm just going to bring this value back until I see that they're kind of going away at a good point. Yeah, so lifetime, that looks pretty good, something like that. 
And depending on how powerful your computer is or the look you're going for, you can bump this up. I'm going to bump it up to like 15,000. Oh yeah, looking good. So feel free to play with the, the geometry of this emission object as much as you want, just to get it looking, uh, you know, get the wake looking the way you want. And um, you'd probably notice there's there's actually some particles probably going in the boat. Yeah, there is. But since we added this little top thing, it's kind of hiding them. And that's that's pretty much the reason we did it. So we're looking good. Now, if we were to unpause our render over here, we can't see the particles. And that's because this is really just data. And we actually need to tell Blender um, what should be at those particles. So I'm going to add an icosphere. And yeah, I'm going to have icospheres be at where those particles are. So you can make this a higher quality sphere if you want, but since there's going to be so many of them, I want the geometry to be pretty small. Um, so I'm shading it smooth. And then over here in the particle settings with that selected, I'm going to change this render option. Uh, well, for one, when I render, I don't want to see the emitter, which is this, uh, like the actual geometry there. Like you can kind of see it right there. This is just a preview, so it still shows, but uh, you wouldn't, I don't want that to show up in the actual thing. So yeah, looking good. Let's change the render to object and then let's select an object, this icosphere. And now it's working. Let's just move this uh, out of the way here. And we can actually, let's add a material for that. Um, I guess since I've been in the habit of naming particles or naming materials, let's go ahead and name it. Turn the roughness up, maybe make it a nice bright white. Okay, that's gonna be cool. Let's, uh, let's let a couple of frames play here so we can see what we got. Yeah, that's looking cool. A little bit like styrofoam or something though. So let's, uh, let's adjust that by finding the scale value. Okay, so turn the scale up there a little bit. And then maybe the scale randomness. That'll just, yeah, make it so they're kind of different sizes. And yeah, just get these values to, to something you like. I think that looks pretty good. So before you were going to render this, you would want to bake your particle simulation. So when we just like press space bar and like, you know, this is all happening live, like we can change these values and it'll adjust in real time, which works with a pretty simple simulation like this. But when you render this, you actually want to kind of lock in what's happening. And the way you do that is by over here in the particle system settings, you want to go down into your cache and then delete all bakes and bake all dynamics. And that'll basically just, it'll calculate all the dynamic things happening in your scene. Um, now, one thing I forgot to do, particle systems are kind of hard to loop, but um, the one thing that's mainly giving this away now is that it starts at, there's like, there's nothing emitting right there and it starts at frame one, but I could have it start at, let's like delete the bake so we can adjust this again. I can have this start at, technically if the lifetime is about 14, then we'd want it to start at like negative 14, but I'll just pop that back a little, give ourselves some extra room. And then now let's bake all dynamics. Cool. So now, you know, there's a little bit of a stutter, but this loops, the, the water loops, the, the boat going up and down loops. Particle's not quite perfect. I'm not sure exactly the best way to go about making a particle system loop, but I know there are ways you could do it. Feel free to look into it. I better pause this before my computer dies over here. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I hope you guys really enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, leave me a thumbs up. If you didn't, then uh, just get the heck out of here, all right? Just leave, please. Get out. I'm sorry you didn't like it. Tell me why in the comments. Uh, if you did like it, leave me a, a, a nice friendly comment. But thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe. Sorry for the lack of boat puns. I really didn't ever come up with any good ones. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Look at that boat. It's all boaty. Boaty McBoat face. Play with your camera angles. Make some cool sounds. All right. Thanks for watching. Um, thank you for being the type of person that watches like the last 10 seconds for whatever reason. Um, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. I'll see you next time.